The first part of our ceremony is the service of light, which centres around the Easter fire and the Paschal candle to symbolise Christ who proclaimed himself the light of the world. The remaining parts of the ceremony include the liturgy of the word, the blessing of the Easter water and the solemn renewal of our baptismal vows and the liturgy of the Eucharist. Shortly we will begin with the church in darkness. We will share in the return to light through the lighting of the paschal candle, lit from the new fire. Please remain seated whilst the celebrant addresses the people and blesses the fire. The celebrant cuts the letters of the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Omega, being the first and the last letters. They symbolise the eternity of Christ, who is God. He carves in the year to show this year belongs to Christ, the Lord of all time. Grains of incense are inserted in the form of a cross to symbolise the five wounds of Jesus in the hands and feet up and side. The paschal candle is lit from the new fire. The fire is at the back of the church, which you see on the screen. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together and watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall, be sh we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Be careful of that. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendour through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him. And all ages to him be glory and power through every age, amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ Jesus guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. That's carried by the we deacon. follow the movements to symbolise our following Christ as the light of the world, to, wish to share eternal life with him. Please turn on your candles.
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.
Brothers and dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please remain seated for all the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's spirit hovered over the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and morning came, the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault and it divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came, morning came, the second day. God said, let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. 
And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of water seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds and trees be bearing fruit with their seed inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came the third day. God said, let there be light in the vault of heaven to divide day from night and let them indicate festivals, days and years. Let there be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came, morning came, the fourth day. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters teemed and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came, and morning came, the fifth day. God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, Let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves. And let there be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven and all living animals on the earth. God said, see, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, to all birds of heaven and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliages of the plants for food. And so it was. God saw all that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. Evening came and morning came the sixth day. Thus, heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. 
The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. Lord, send out your spirit. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the oceans like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You made springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. From your dwelling you water the hills. Earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve men's needs. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of the riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord, send out your spirit. And let us pray. Almighty Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvellous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry ground. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea. Walls of water to the right and to the left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and cloud and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots, and their horsemen. 
Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots, and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea, not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. That day the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honour of the Lord. Response, let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. This is my God, and I extol him. My Father's God, I give him praise. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh he hurled into the sea. The flower of his army is drowned in the sea. The deeps hide them. They sank like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, glorious in its power. Your right hand, Lord, has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your glory, you crushed the foe. You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain. The place, O Lord, where you have made your home. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have made, the Lord will reign forever and ever. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have, have unlocked the meaning of the wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your spirit through Christ our Lord. reading from the prophet Isaiah. O come to the water, all you who are thirsty, though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made you a witness to the people, a leader and, master, and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation that you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord 
who will take pity on him. To our God, who is rich in, in, in forgiving, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above the earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and snow come down from the heaven and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating, so the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, you will draw water joyfully from the spring of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the spring of salvation. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my saviour. With will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the greatness of his name. from the springs of salvation. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joy from the springs of salvation. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please off your candles. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. 
Please be seated for the New Testament reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Jesus Christ, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ, we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to, be, and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of the dawn, the woman went to the tomb with the spices that she had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but entering discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at her side. Terrified, the woman lowered their eyes. The two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over to the power of sinful men and be crucified and rise again on the third day. 
and they remembered his words. When the woman returned from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the others. The woman was Mary Magdala, Jonah, Mary, mother of James. The other woman with them also told the apostles. But this story of theirs seemed pure nonsense, and they did not believe them. Peter, however, went running to the tomb. He bent down and saw the binding clothes, but nothing else. He then went back to home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. What characterizes our liturgy this evening and makes it so distinct from any other, other liturgy throughout the year and what makes this the supreme liturgical moment of the church's year is simply what we have right in the middle of the church at the moment is the light, the candle. And throughout the world, all the ancient churches celebrate this event by this light, you would have seen images of what happens in Jerusalem for the Greek Orthodox. They enter into the tomb of the Holy Sepulchre and suddenly the priest or the bishop comes rushing out with a light, with a fire, which everyone goes and collects and everyone rejoices in this light, this flame. This is what happens in the Russian Orthodox Church, in the Roman Catholic Church, in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, in the Maronite Church. It is the one thing which characterizes the vigil. It's the one thing by which we all in the old churches celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And I want to spend a little bit of time pondering this extraordinary candle. The exaltet, which we sang this evening to a wonderful melody. I've never heard this exaltet. Well done, Father Max. Um, when I hear something different, I often think this is wonderful. And it, was, it was beautifully sung. If you, in fact, go back to the very old form of the exaltet, it's a melody which we in the Roman Catholic Church share with the Syrian Church because the original melody, in fact, is older than Gregorian chant, because it, in fact, it, in musical terms, identifies how all of the old Christian churches are united. They're united in singing the exalted, they're united in what this flame is about. The last part of the, of the exalted ends with something most wonderful, something which we often pass by. Because when we listen to the exalted, we focus on Jesus Christ. But the exalted ends with a beautiful prayer. And it goes like this. We offer you, as our gift, this candle, undivided but divided. And that puts this candle in perspective. It's not simply a candle which drives out the darkness, but it is on the feast of the resurrection, the defining feast of the church's year. It is the church's gift to God the Father. And you will wonder why, why, why is this? Why is this chosen in all the ancient churches as the only gift that we can give God the Father? It's not your donations. It's not the Project Compassion boxes. It's not Easter eggs. It's none of these things. It's a simple light because that light represents not only the church in Alstonville, not only the Diocese of Lismore, but it represents you and I. In what way? As the Exalted says, this one flame will drive out the darkness. And you stop and think about it. It's true. 
One candle light will drive out the darkness. You don't need to turn on every halogen lamp you can find. One little flame, one little flame that can be blown out in an instant. One little flame that is flickering and struggling to keep a light. Those of you who've ever been in processions know that as soon as the wind comes, the candles will go out. This is the vulnerability of the candle. And strangely, it is how I experience myself. And I'm sure it's how you experience yourselves. As weak as a candle, not strong, always open to being snuffed out. And that is why this candle represents you and I. Because the weakness of my light, as weak and diminished as it might be, is sufficient to drive out darkness. The weakness of this community in Alstonville, which is all of your individual lights added together, is sufficient to drive out darkness. The light of every soul in the Diocese of Lismore is sufficient to drive out darkness. Just as the light of the church throughout the world on this night is sufficient to drive out darkness. This candle is our gift to God because this candle is you and I, weak, small, without strength. And at this time, when we see what's happening in the world, we often wonder, what can we do? What can we do for the Ukraine? What can we do for the people that have lost everything in the floods? What can we do in this calamitous moment in the world? Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday says quite simply, continue to be a light for the world. Continue to stand there in who you are. Do not be afraid because that is all each of us is. But that is what God asks of us. On this night, God the Father asks not greatness from us, but simply continue to be a light in the darkness. That's our call. That's what Easter's about. And I pray, I ask you to pray for me, that our lights will not go out, that we will continue to, to, to take the place that God has given us and together drive out the darkness and bring Christ into the world. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so please stand. I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce Satan so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author of and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, 
rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. I haven't blessed it yet. Dear sisters and brothers, like the apostles of old, we gather at the table of the Lord and learn the meaning of humble service. We pray for Pope Francis. May he continue to be a living witness to the compassion of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those baptised at Easter and those received into full communion in the Catholic Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians persecuted around the world. May they be strengthened by their faith in Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world. May there be an end to the war in Ukraine and everywhere else. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by the recent floods. We ask your blessing on all those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their security and their hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may hear the Lord welcoming them into paradise. 
we remember Father John Worthington. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we gather this evening, I would like to add a prayer for the community here at Alstonville and for Father Max, that you continue to be a light of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Jesus, let heaven and earth rejoice, for raised from the dead you make us alive with faith, hope and charity, who live and reign forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, our prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what was has begun in the Paschal mysteries may by the by the working of your power. Bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy and all your beloved people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
And let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, we always have to have our notices, and tonight on your parish news, you will see a big thank you there to all those people who assisted in the Easter Mass. Uh, I suppose we have to thank the bishop too, okay, for coming. Um, there was the altar servers, the readers, the musicians, the singers, the extraordinary ministers, the flower arranger, and the laptop operator and all those people who had anything to do with the service tonight. Thank you very much for your help. Well done. The only person that really stuffed up was the parish priest. <laughs> anyway, that'll, that's life. All right. Um, also, there's a notice here about the Divine Mercy Sundays. Please join us at our church here in Austinville for the Divine Mercy Sunday on the 24th of April at 3 p.m. for the blessing of the Divine Mercy image and for the prayers of this special feast day. And that's it. Thank you. I'd like to say something before the end. Um, the reason that I'm here is because our cathedral got flooded. And as a consequence, I'm not bound to any cathedral. And so my diocese at this, for this Easter is the cathedral. And I can't think of a better place to be for the vigil than with you here at Alstonville. Father Max has always been very supportive of his bishop. In fact, I would count him as a friend. And so it's delightful for me to be here with you for this vigil mass. I thank you for your hospitality and for your welcome. And I will pray for this community in my Easter prayers. I ask you to pray for me, to pray for Deacon Graham, but above all else, for 
Father Max, because he's the one that has to put up with you all. But I, <laughs> I, I don't see that he's struggling with that. And I must say, it's quite a joy for me after a number of years to be able to have an Easter vigil, which is not a high pontifical Episcopal one, because I'm in a parish rather than in a cathedral. So thank you for having me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please stand. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Um, I must also say to you, you're, you're quite lucky because I'm doing the Vigil Mass here. And where I do the Vigil Mass, as the Bishop of the Diocese, I give a plenary indulgence. So that's something which you will all receive this evening because you're here at Mass with me. And so this blessing carries with it the normal plenary indulgence which a bishop can give in his diocese for Easter. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be Speak to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. That was a deacon's fault. <laughs>